In this video, I'm going to show you nine of the new features that are available in the Mac version of Camtasia 2021. And unlike my other videos that are scripted, I'm just going to do this live. So let's head over to our Mac and we'll start with color LUTs. Now, what is a LUT? A LUT is an abbreviation for look up table. And these are ways that we can enhance our videos by changing things like shadows and different colors. All right, so let's look at how we can apply this in Camtasia for Mac. We'll start by looking at a video. So I already have a video in place here. And Visual Effects has this new feature called Color LUT. So I can grab this and drag it either here to the canvas or down here on the timeline. And notice when I do that the colors get a little more vivid. You can see the difference when I mouse over it. It's going to show me like an update. Certainly my skin tone looks a little more saturated. So I'm going to go ahead and let go of that. And it applies this standard Enhance Contrast LUT. Okay, we can see on the right where the LUT is, and I just have one LUT. I can also affect the intensity. So you can see, like, I might say, oh, my skin tone looks a little more orange than I want. Can I tone that down a little bit? Yeah, and I can drop it, drop it down or remove it all together if I drag the intensity all the way down to zero. So maybe I say, oh, let's try it somewhere around 50%. LUTs are very common in video editing, so you can find LUTs available for free or for purchase online. You can use LUTs for images or for videos, either one. Let's look at how to import a LUT into Camtasia for Mac. If we click the drop down for the LUT name, we see the option to import a LUT file. Now, I've already downloaded one, and so I'm going to click that LUT and click Open. And now I can see that that is their LUT applied. You can see it's a little bit different. So the blue isn't as blue as it was before. Uh, it looks like the blue got muted a bit. Um, but if we want to see what it looks like without it, of course, we can toggle this off. So this is what it was before the LUT and after the LUT. So you can see it really takes out a lot of blue uh, for this particular LUT. So it all depends on the type of LUT that you download. So if we say, let's not use this LUT anymore, we don't need this, there's an option to remove a LUT file. And in here we can check any of the LUT files that we want to remove and click remove. All right, and then when we do, we can go back to the default LUT that's there. And then you can see that that's the only one in the list now. The next feature is the automatic animation feature. This is a new button that's available above the canvas. What it does is automatically adds animations based on the changes that we make to our video. Let's take a look. If I go to the next clip, I can see that this is just a standard recording of a screen. But I see that most of the action is happening at the top. And so maybe I want to zoom in at the top. Let's change the mode that we're in. Currently, you can see we're in edit mode. And let's change it over to this auto animate mode. So I'm going to click this. Now I'll go to this clip and I'll type 150. And I don't want it zooming to the center, I want it zooming to the upper left, so I'll align it to the upper left. Now, if I zoom in down here on the timeline, you can see that it added an animation. It'll zoom me to that point. And then, a little bit later, I see when this appears, I say, oh, okay, well, actually, this maybe I want this a little further in the center. Uh, let me just drag this over to the center. And now I see another animation came in. So now it animated to this point, and then animated it over. And then maybe I sit for a while and I click on Camtasia, and then when this page loads, I want it to come back to full screen. So at this point in the timeline, let's see, I want it to be in the center, so I'll move it to the center first. There we go, and then I'll try the scale option, and that should be better, yes. So then it goes here, and then it zooms back out. So you can see all I need to do is move my playhead to where I want on the timeline, make some kind of change, maybe I want this to be over here, and I'm gonna put a talking head over here. And you can see when I do that, it just adds that animation automatically for me. So that's the mode, the auto animate mode, that's available in Camtasia for Mac. Before we continue on, I'm gonna go back to the edit mode so I don't accidentally make a bunch of changes and I'll zoom out so I can see the rest of my timeline. The next feature is duplicate media. So in the past, we would use Command C and Command V to copy and paste. Now we can just use Command D to duplicate something that's already selected. One thing to note is that copy and paste will paste wherever the playhead is, but Command D to duplicate will duplicate it exactly where it is in that same place on the timeline. So if you wanted something at one point, you wanted to copy and paste it later in the timeline, uh, probably Command C and Command V is going to be the better way to do that. Otherwise, if you do Command D, it'll just duplicate it in that area and then you'll have to move it to where you want it on the timeline. So if I go to this clip and let's see, I wanna select this text, I'll do Command D and you can see that it made a duplicate of that text box. So I can move that item here. Command D again and now I have that. Or if I want, I can select all three, Command D, and then drag those three over here. So you can see whatever you select when you Command D 
it will duplicate that item exactly where it is again on the timeline. So I can't go like over here and do a command D because I put it over here in this point in my timeline. The next feature is jump to time and that lets us jump to a specific point on our timeline. For example, if I want to go back to the beginning, I can just click here where the time code is and I can type in 00 and press enter and now I'm back to the beginning. Or if I want to go back to where I was about 35 seconds in, I can click here again and I can type 3500 for 35 seconds, press enter, and now I'm at exactly 35 seconds. You can also use Shift T to get to this field and then type in your number. Next, let's look at zoom and pan. Zoom and pan is a feature that I personally don't use very much, and it's been available in the Windows version for several years, but let's look at how you could use zoom and pan if you were new to Camtasia. To start, I'm going to go to a screen recording that is larger than my canvas. What do I mean by that? Well, if I go to my media and I want to look at the properties for this Retina screencast, then I can see that its dimensions are 3360 by 2100. Now, if I look at my canvas settings, I can see that I'm only working in 1920 by 1080. So the way that you'll be able to use zoom and pan is to have a recording that's larger than your canvas. And we do. Let's go to edit and zoom and pan. When we do, we see this window pop up and it lets us make changes to the zoom level of our project. For example, let me move the playhead a little bit to the left and maybe I want it to be zoomed in at the bottom left right here. So I'm gonna change the zoom and I can use the slider to zoom in or I can just type in like maybe I want it to be 100%. So I'm gonna type in 100, press enter and then I want it to be looking down here. So I'm gonna move my screen to show just what's happening down here. Notice that it added an animation when I did that. So it zooms into that lower part and then we go to new window. Well, now we want to go back up to the top. Okay. So at this point, I want to zoom back out. So I'm going to go to scale to fit. So it zooms all the way back out. And then I think I start typing something at the top. So maybe I want to zoom in when I start typing. There we go. So I start typing around this point. So maybe that's when I want to zoom in. So maybe I don't want to go to 100%. Maybe I'll just go to 75%. So I'll type in 75, press enter, and then just move this to the top. And yeah, maybe move it over to here. There we go. So now we see that it'll zoom to the bottom. It'll zoom back out. Then zoom in a little bit to the top. Okay. And so that's how you can use the zoom and pan feature. Now, as I mentioned before, I personally don't use it. Instead, what I do is I'll just move my playhead to where I want that animation to be. I'll use shift A to add that animation. And then I'll go to after the animation and make the changes to the scale and the positioning. Next, there are a couple of new options in the Preferences window that I want to show you. So we'll close our Zoom and Pan window for now, and I'll go to Preferences, which we can use Command Comma to get to if we want our keyboard shortcut, and I'll start with the General tab. Notice here we have a new button that's Camtasia System Preferences. Let me go ahead and click that. Here I have everything enabled already, but if I didn't, I would go in, I would see it says Disabled, and I would be able to double click. When I double click, it would open up System Preferences and take me directly to that section. It would have something selected on the left, and then I would find Camtasia on the right, and I would just check the box for Camtasia 2021. And if we look under the Timeline tab, the other thing that's new is this option to split animations. So when you have split animations unchecked, then a change you make in the middle of an animation will actually apply to the beginning and end. Let me show you. If I go to this area of the timeline, I can see in the middle of this animation we're sliding over to the right. The screen recording is sliding to the right. If I say at this point in my animation, I want the video to be a little less opaque. I want it to be a little more transparent. Notice that as soon as I made a change in the middle of this animation, that it split the animation into two. It said, okay, well, you want to be, you know, at this position and then you want to fade out and then you kind of want to fade back in when you come over here. So it's making two separate animations. All right, let me command Z to get out of that. And now let me change it back and I'm going to uncheck split animations. And now when I try and do this, if I go to this point, you know, somewhere here in the middle, and again, I drop the opacity, notice that nothing changed here. Where is it changing it? Well, it's actually changing it here. You can see at the end of this animation and all through this animation. So rather than doing something in the middle and creating two different animations, it's saying I'll apply this change to both the beginning and the end of this animation. And most of the time, that's probably what we want. We don't want it to split animations. We want to leave that box unchecked so that any change we make in the middle of an animation is applied to both the beginning and the end of this animation. 
Next, you may have noticed we had some extra zoom options. So in the past, I think we could zoom to 500% or something like that. Now we can go 400, 800, 1200, all the way up to 2000%. So just more zoom options here. If you wanted to zoom in 800%, sure enough, you can. I'll restore this back and I'll say fit. The next option is pan and scale. And what we can do with pan and scale is get to a specific percentage quickly. So if we go here and say edit pan and scale, uh, right now it's scaled to fit, but maybe I want it to scale to 50%. Okay, then it automatically scaled that clip to 50%. Or maybe I want to scale it to 100%. All right, there it is. And if I wanted to, of course, I could put it, you know, somewhere like here. So then perhaps later in this video, right about here, it opens up a new window. So I'll do shift A to add an animation. And then I want it to scale back out. Well, if I needed to, I could use the scroll wheel on the mouse and scroll way down and then grab the corner and drag this and find the position and put it in the center. Or let me do command Z to take us back to where we were before. I'll just go back to fit. Now what I can do is quickly get there by saying pan and scale, scale to fit. And then it just automatically put it here in the center, ready to go. So if I go back, I can see I was zoomed in and now it scales me out. So we can use pan and scale if we want to go to specific numbers like 25%, 50%, 100, 200, or if we want to scale to fit. You can think of it like a preset for those specific percentages. Notice that each of these also has a keyboard shortcut. The last new feature is restore audio. So I'm going to click on this clip and go to the audio tab. And I want to zoom in so you can see what I did was I had a video and I made a bunch of changes in the audio. I, you know, raised this and lowered that. And there are all these different edits. And I might come back and say, oh, I've made so many changes to this. It actually doesn't sound good. Can I just get back to where it was originally, but keep all of the rest of the same properties? And we can do that. We can right click and we can say restore audio. And when we do all those audio points go away. And then if we needed to do something, you know, like to raise the whole thing all at once, we could do that. 